543, we had a question coming out of chapter 2, number 90, and here we had 25 randomly selected students were asked the number of movies that they watched in the previous week. So the thing that I would like for us to hear in that, I'm just going to write it here, was our variable, right? Number of movies watched in the previous week. And that is a numerical variable. Right? It's discrete numerical because we would count it. And the, the directions were, can you construct a box plot? So I'm going to do this by hand, and then I'm going to do it on my calculator. So what I first want to do, anytime I want to figure out or want to make a box plot, the first thing I need to do is figure out, hey, were there outliers in this data? And I'm going to use my calculator to help me with that. So you can see I put my variable in L1, and this time I put the frequencies into L2. Now I'm going to erase my little scribbles here. What this is saying is that we interviewed, or in our sample of 25, five of those students said they watched zero movies. So you also could have put five zeros into a list, right? And then if I wanted to do it this way, I would have had to put nine ones into a list, right? It could start to be really long. And since they gave us the frequencies, I'm just going to use that information as I go through one of our stats. But the thing that you have to remember is if you're doing one bar stats and you have your frequencies in L2, you have to hit the comma L2 so that your calculator is calculating the right numbers. And when I do that and I scroll down on my one bar stats, you can see all of the five number summary there. And that's really going to assist me in making my modified box plot. But before I actually go sketch that thing out, let me see if there are outliers. So we have that three-step process to create a safety zone, right? I'm going to take my IQR, which is going to be in this case two minus one. So that's one. I'm going to take that IQR, right? And you always multiply it by one and a half and one times 1.5 is 1.5. And then from there, you build your safety zone. You take whatever that number was in step two, you subtract it from your first quartile and add it to your upper quartile, right? Or third quartile. So you lower that, that Q1 threshold and you raise that Q3 threshold so that you can find this safety zone. And I wind up with, I've got negative 0.5 to 3.5. Okay, so that's my safety zone. And then I just need to see were any values of my variable, right? Any values for the number of movies these students watched in the previous week, were they outside the safety zone? Well, let's check. So I'm going to send this over to my red pen. My first one was zero, and zero is in the safety zone, so that's not an outlier. All right, one, one is in the safety zone. It's between negative 0.5 and 3.5. So is two, so is three, but you can see there's a problem here at four. Four does not live in this safety zone, right? It's actually outside of the safety zone because four is greater than 3.5, which is fine. It just that means that this student who watched four movies in the previous week, good on that person, it's an outlier, and I'm going to keep that in mind as I go through this. So I'm going to do. A, I'm going to try and sketch my box plot. Real. I don't really have a ton of room. I'll just go right in here. I'm going to make my little fake x-axis here, and when I scroll down, you'll see the like fancier one that I did. But you can see my variable is zero, one, two, three, and four, right? And I would label it with number of movies watched and all of that. And if we start to go through this, here's my min at zero, my Q1 at one, my median at one, my Q3 at two, and then I have my outlier here at four. And because I'm making a modified box plot, I need to put that as its own isolated dot. Now the highest non-outlier was three, so I'm also gonna put a little box in here for three. Now keep in mind, you always wanna box your middle 50% of your data. So I wanna box from one to two. I'm gonna box from one to two here, and then I don't have a little middle median because my median actually was the same value as my, my Q1, which is fine. So I'm going to whisker to my highest non-outlier and whisker down to my min, and there's my box plot. Now, if, if you take a look at what I did here, if you look at my calculator screen, you see I had one plot on, two plots off, which is fine. And you can see I had the modified box plot type, and I did my variable in L1. And again, the frequencies were in L2. All right, if I had, like I had previously said, if I had listed all of those numbers out like that, then I would have had a frequent, oops, excuse me, a frequency list of one here, but I didn't. I had my frequencies in L2. All right, I set up my stat plot, zoom nine, and then if we scroll down, oh, there's me also setting up my stat plot with that screen. You can see here is 
my box plot. And that actually looks not too shabby compared to the one I kind of sketched here by hand. But I'm also, uh, I, of course, I labeled it, you know. And, and one thing that's unique to box plots is there is no label on the y-axis, all right? Um, histograms, bar charts, those have labels on the y-axis. This one doesn't. All right, so there's number 90. Thanks so much, everyone.